Buyer's Guide to Procure to Pay Automation, sponsored by CoreCentric. My name is Mark Brousseau. I'll be your host for today's webinar. A few housekeeping items before we get started. If you have any questions during the course of today's webinar, I encourage you to use the question and answer panel on your GoToWebinar screen. Send us your questions and we'll answer them at the conclusion of today's webinar. If you'd like a copy of the recording of today's webinar, you don't have to do anything. We're going to send it to you automatically. So chances are automation is atop your procure to pay priorities for 2020. Yes, we're already looking ahead to next year. But to ensure that your organization gets everything it wants out of procure to pay automation, you need to make sure you have a plan, a guide, if you will for ensuring your success. And that's what we're gonna provide you with today. We're gonna to show you the step-by-step -step approach to ensuring that your procure-to-pay automation approach is a good one. And the first step, of course, to automating your procure-to-pay process is to know where you stand. Statistics show that only about 40% of all procure-to-pay organizations currently track key metrics, such as their cost to process a single invoice. This is a big problem when you're about to embark on an automation project. After all, how are you supposed to build a business case for automation if you don't currently know where you stand, or to know what issues you need to address, or what functionality the system needs to provide? So the first step in automating your procure to pay process is to take a hard look at the way you currently do things. On the screen, we're showing you the ePayables framework. This is a model built by our friends at Ardent Partners. It shows you the different processes associated with procure to pay. One of the key steps you need to do when you're getting ready to automate your processes is to determine your scope of work. What is it we want to address? Are we doing a phased approach where we're just going to address the receipt and processing of invoice? Or are we going to address the entire life cycle through payments and settlement? Are we going to address procurement, the requisition and approval of POs, or just invoice processing? These are the key things you need to understand before you ever invite a vendor into your operations. And to do this, I strongly suggest that you elicit the feedback of your frontline staff. That's right, your frontline staff. Many of you, this thought brings fear. It makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. Oh no, this is going to make them scared about their job security. Well, in reality, many projects go awry because too many P2P leaders try to involve their frontline staff at the very last moment. In many cases, when the solution's already been selected, and yet these are our process experts in many of our organizations. These are the folks who know where the bodies are buried. These are the folks who can help tell you what's working well and what's not working. Have them help you understand what it is that a procure-to-pay solution can do for your organization. What's more, if you get them excited about the benefits of automating, well, it's gonna make them less fearful. In fact, it might just make them excited. And one thing your frontline staff will probably tell you about your P2P process today is that there's too much manual keying, paper handling, and filing going on. In fact, the majority of organizations have to manually handle the majority of invoices they receive from suppliers. In fact, in many organizations, that's also true of invoices that arrive via email, FTP upload, and even a supplier portal. What's going on? Well, many of the systems and processes that you currently use are simply not built for electronic processes. In many cases, organizations are printing out emailed invoices, and keying them, handling them as paper. Some of you think you're really clever. You get your operators a second monitor. They open emails on one screen and key them into their ERP in another. This simply isn't an optimal way to handle our invoices. So what we're finding is, is, is more P2P organizations are looking for ways to make themselves more efficient, more cost effective, to capture more early payment discount opportunities, 
and to increase the productivity of the staff, to free them for the drudgery of all those manual processes I just described, and to focus more of their time on those value-added activities, things like data analysis, supplier management, and cleaning up your filthy vendor master database. And today, most organizations are working with, well, a suboptimal level of automation. In fact, the vast majority of organizations say that they're not very automated, and they're looking to do something about that. And in 2020, this is why organizations are going to prioritize finding ways to become more automated. They want to become more flexible. They want to get tighter integration with their ERP. They want to find ways to drive strategic objectives of the organization. So to do this, you need to develop a game plan. You need to understand what it is you want to achieve. And to do that, you need to know where you stand. The game plan then, solve your tactical and manual-based issues. Then develop and build an intelligent function, not one that's based on manual heads down transaction processing. And then engage your stakeholders so you can grow support and you can drive expanded capabilities across the organization. To do all that, you need to know where you stand. The second step to achieving optimal results from P2P automation in 2020 is to develop an approach to capturing invoice data. There's no question that the data that resides on our invoices and other accounts payable documents has tremendous value to the organization. Businesses learned their lesson during the financial meltdown of 2008. They knew that they exacerbated the credit crisis by simply not knowing where they stood with their cash and they swore they'd never allow it to happen again. The problem was, of course, at that time is that most businesses were keeping their invoice data on paper invoices, right? And shoving them into file cabinets and hallways, putting them into cardboard boxes that were stored off site, in many cases, never keying the data, never knowing what was on those invoices. So what organizations need to do is to find a way to get at that data. This is a chart of the P2P automation continuum. This shows you how an organization would move from a paper-based invoice processing environment to one that's electronic, straight-through processing. What you might notice is that data capture is critical to achieving optimum results from invoice processing. Organizations recognize this, and what you see is, is that when it comes to P2P technology, Tools for capturing invoice data and managing it across the organization are a high priority. So what we're finding is, is that even in the future, even for advanced technologies, organizations want to find ways to be able to capture that data as efficiently as possible. Robotic process automation, tools that allow you to automatically to automate simple repetitive tasks such as retrieving invoices and, and putting data into our systems of record, well, that's certainly of keen interest to organizations. But look at this, e-invoicing, P2P automation, analytics, artificial intelligence, intelligent data capture, all of these are tools that help us get at our invoice data more quickly and efficiently. One way that you might be looking to capture your invoice data is through scan and capture technology. There's really three key components to these solutions. The first is that it intelligently scans documents. It allows you to eliminate the preparation that often goes on in the mailroom. The technology can digitally sort documents by identifying them, understanding what's an invoice, what's backup document, what's an expense report, and then applying the appropriate rules to it. Some of those rules are going to be around extracting the data. Scan and capture solutions use sophisticated data capture technology to automatically extract all that information that many of us are relying on human operators to key. You know, things like invoice number, the date, the amount, the vendor. What's more, the technology is going to automatically validate the information it extracts against information that resides in your ERP or another system of record. 
It allows you to match that data automatically so that we can understand where any discrepancies lie, so we can catch them earlier in the process to eliminate downstream issues. Now, in the past, scanning capture used to be considered a burden for organizations. After all, who wants to put on-premise solutions, buy expensive scanning hardware, and then have to maintain expensive software in their shop? All of this was costly. It was risky. It had you holding the bag in terms of scan and capture. Well, today, organizations no longer need to be burdened by these in-house solutions. There's the opportunity to outsource scan and capture capabilities. Put it in the cloud. By doing this, you're able to eliminate the investment in that scanning hardware that seems to become outdated the moment you install it. It eliminates the maintenance costs on that hardware. It eliminates the possibility of interruptions as a result of equipment downtime. We've all been there. What's more, by using an outsourced service for scanning and capturing invoice data, now we no longer need to train our staff to become expert in yet another solution. And with an outsourced solution, now we have the ability to have a third party validate all those OCR exceptions. What's more, in a SaaS outsourcing environment, there's no paper to manage. So in other words, you get the efficiency and effectiveness of automating the capture of your invoice data without the burden of another operational headache. Scan and capture isn't the only way that you can automate that extraction of invoice data. Another opportunity is through electronic invoicing. These are solutions that move invoices directly from your supplier's billing system to your ERP or AP system without the need for you having to key data and handle paper. These solutions provide invoice receipt so that they aggregate all of your invoices onto a single platform. It validates that the invoice is legitimate and then performs the extraction of the data as well as two-way and even three-way matching. So invoices can be compared to POs and shipping documents that might reside in your ERP. Invoices that are matched are automatically uploaded to your ERP, straight through, in other words, without a human operator ever having to touch them. In many cases, organizations are able to post 60%, 80%, or more of their invoices straight through without anyone ever having to touch them. And any exceptions are digitally routed to the appropriate approvers based on business rules that you pre-configure. What's more, with electronic invoicing, you're not only automating the extraction of that invoice data, you're also able to facilitate online collaboration. We've all been there, right? Those exceptions would kick off two to four weeks of back and forth emails and phone calls and tracking down documents. With an electronic invoicing solution, you can instantly message your supplier's billing department so you can understand what's going on, so you can track down information more quickly. What's more, in an electronic invoicing environment, you have the power of real-time insights into your working capital, your spend, your operational efficiency based on graphical dashboards. All of this is going to provide you with greater accuracy. When you're able to post invoices straight through without human operator intervention, now you're gonna have less chance of errors, miskeyed data, information that's not timely. Information is gonna flow seamlessly through your department in a frictionless environment. Another way that you can achieve the benefits of electronic invoicing is through a so-called supplier network. These are online tools that connect buyers with suppliers. Suppliers use a self-service portal to submit their electronic invoices to you. They instantly receive a confirmation that the invoice was, was received. And then they can view the status of invoices and payments instantly via the portal. What's more, they can collaborate with you. They can send you messages. Why are things taking so long? Uh, is there opportunities for early payment if I exchange a discount with you? 
and they can even access their invoice and payment history. All of this information is at their fingertips. So now, not only are you achieving the benefits of extracting invoice data automatically, you're also eliminating a lot of those phone calls and emails regarding status. And those cost you more than you think. Studies show that the typical organization spends anywhere from $2.50 to $3.60 per supplier inquiry. That money adds up quickly. With a supplier network, you're able to accelerate invoice approval times. You're eliminating the need to scan or capture data, and you're going to have fewer inquiries from your suppliers. Now, that's not to say that all supplier network models are created equal. You need to ask some key questions when you're evaluating supplier models. In one model, suppliers are going to pay to use the solution based on a percentage of their spend. They pay a, you, you're going to pay an implementation fee, they pay a percentage of the spend, and you pay per invoice. Needless to say, suppliers are very resistant to this model. After all, they might not want to take a haircut based on their sales. There's also a model where suppliers pay a flat fee to use this, the portal. In this case, they're going to um, pay a flat monthly fee while you pay an implementation fee and a per invoice fee. Here again, many suppliers are resistant to this. After all, why, why should they be paying any fees at all? And that brings us to our next model, which is the supplier free model. In this case, your suppliers pay nothing. You pay no implementation fees. You, you just simply pay a per invoice fee. That's easily outweighed by the cost savings you're going to achieve. So when you're evaluating supplier network models, I highly encourage you to be sure you understand exactly how the payment model is set up. The next step in searching for a P2P automation solution is to determine your automation model. There's lots of technologies out there and there's lots of ways to are delivered to end users today. The one you're probably familiar with is an in-house solution where you build your own solution, and you install software, and maintain it with your internal IT. Studies show that more and more organizations are, are moving off of this model. They don't want the burden of IT upkeep, the high cost of capital expenditures, and ongoing maintenance charges. There's also hosted ASP models. This is where a third-party provider hosts and maintains your dedicated software. There's also a hybrid software as a solution model. In this case, your solution is delivered as a subscription service over the internet. You're a single tenant of a package solution. This eliminates many of the costs associated with those in-house on-premise solutions. And finally, most appealing of all is a true software as a solution model. This is delivered as a subscription model over the internet multi-tenant, highly configurable, and in many cases, organizations are adopting SaaS solutions. One of the other automation models you'll encounter are bank services. Your organization already does a lot of business with its bank, and in many cases, those banks are now calling on you to try and sell you accounts payable solutions. The problem is, as tantalizing as it is to work with a trusted partner like your bank, well, they tend to lack the functionality that businesses need. In many cases, those banks are actually not even performing the work themselves. They're using third parties, in some cases nearshore or offshore, to do the work. The goal of the bank, of course, is to get more revenue. Your goal is to make sure you achieve optimum P2P efficiency and effectiveness. And that's probably not going to occur through your bank. There's also on-premise solutions. This is the way we used to buy and consume our solutions from vendors for things like P2P. With these solutions, well, yeah, they're customizable, but at a high cost. We're all familiar with the professional services fees that we have to pay. 
They also require a significant capital expense in hardware, software, and infrastructure. Capital money that is hard to come by in most accounts payable departments. You also have to be very careful of the professional services fees associated with on-premise solutions, particularly if you're looking at some of those data capture solutions. You need to ask up front exactly how much will it cost to set up the, the supplier invoices in the system. If you're sitting on 20,000 supplier records in your database, you better be sure you know exactly how that solution is going to be able to accommodate them. On-premise solutions typically also have a longer implementation and they require significant IT support. There's also ECM, Enterprise Content Management Solutions. These can be delivered on-premise or via a software as a service model. They address those document-driven driven business processes that we have. They're ideal for things like document approvals. In many cases, organizations leverage ECM solutions for multi-department document retention. So you'll see cases where accounts payable, accounts receivable, HR, and maybe even legal are using one platform to route and store the documents they have. The problem is, is that many ECM solutions are not optimized to automate procure to pay. In many cases, they don't have front end capture. The data that they're capturing isn't always reliable. They don't have the dashboards we need for reporting. They don't have the services that many organizations are looking for from procure to pay. There's also software as a service solutions. This is the pay as you go model. It has a low risk, low total cost of ownership and absolutely faster return on investment compared to the three models I just described. Because the technology is delivered via the cloud, well, now we have a very short implementation time frame. There's no upfront infrastructure expense and there's little IT support. Many of you might be wondering, well, will my IT folks actually go for a P2P solution that's delivered via the cloud? The resounding answer for most organizations is absolutely. 60% of the typical IT department's time is spent just keeping the lights on, supporting the systems they've already have in place. They're looking for ways to find solutions that are able to eliminate the burden on them, as well as meet the organization's compliance and security requirements. And SaaS solutions do just that. And forget about this idea that SaaS is a trend. It is, according to Level Research, the fastest growing delivery model in the procure to pay space. It's grown at about 40% per year. And that's because those true SaaS models, well, they allow you to customize your solutions easily even though they offer the same features and functionality as in-house solutions. And they do it in a reliable, scalable environment that allows IT to achieve its objectives while you achieve yours. The next key step in automating Procure to Pay in 2020 is to automate your workflows. Organizations admit that their current P2P processes aren't as flexible as they would like. In fact, Many organizations are downright struggling with a high percentage of exceptions. For most of you, it's your number one burden in your organization. There's a lot of reasons for those exceptions. In many cases, it's discrepancies between PO and invoice. In other cases, it's a supplier error. In fact, 16% of all supplier invoices typically arrive with an error on them. In many cases, there's a lack of a purchase order. Maybe it's a bottleneck in invoice approval or an incorrect purchase order number. And many of you also struggle with a lack of integration between your P2P processes and your enterprise resource planning system. I know many organizations, even large ones, that have automated P2P solutions and then key the data on the approved invoices into their ERP. Well, workflow addresses all of those challenges. The technology routes documents in an intelligent fashion for distribution, approval, exceptions, and payment authorization. It automates the process of two-way and three-way matching between invoices, POs, and shipping documents. And 
it posts approved invoices automatically to an organization's ERP system without the need for keying, without the possibility of errors, without the chance of delays. The next consideration when you're automating your P2P process in 2020 is to find ways to leverage your data. It's no longer enough just to process your invoices quickly. Organizations are leaning on AP hard to be able to provide them with more data to help drive those strategic initiatives around working capital management, spend management, and operational efficiency. Oh, and yes, fraud mitigation. In fact, Arden Partners says that we're entering the age of intelligence, where we're going to see that the information that flows through our financial operations is going to become more important than ever. And this is what you need to look for in a P2P solution. You want to find ways to convert data into value. You want to ensure that the solution you have isn't just going to capture data, it's going to provide you with context so you can help drive cash flow analysis, mitigate risks, streamline invoice exceptions handling, and enhance your supplier management. One way that P2P solutions can do that is with dashboards and reports that allow you to track vendor and invoice history. I want you to look for a solution that provides full visibility into the invoice lifecycle. You want to find one that allows you to record outstanding invoices for accurate accruals so you can see exactly where you stand at a moment's notice. You also want to have available analytics to give you insights into your operations and metrics for forecasting, budgeting, and planning. All of these are available today in advanced P2P solutions, such as the one from CoreCentric. And when you do that, when you have those types of tools, now you're going to be able to improve your AP reporting and analytics. You're going to be able to streamline your paper handling. You'll be able to reduce your costs and improve your connectivity and collaboration. The next step when you're automating P2P in 2020 is to choose the right partner. There's really five key things to look for in a P2P partner. You want to identify key technology platform features and functionalities. Remember back at step one, when you set out your business requirements, you're going to create a matrix for each vendor so you can see how you, they would score on a scale of one to five or one to 10 in each of the key features and capabilities that you've identified. You're going to hand a score sheet to each member of your valuation team. So as they listen to vendors give their presentations, they independently score them. Once the vendors left, then you compare notes. It'll be interesting to see how different stakeholders are going to score vendors in the same area. For instance, procurement might have a different view of some of the PO requisition capabilities than an AP person. That's why it's so critical that you involve different stakeholders as part of the process. It's not just features and functionality you're after, though. You want to find a vendor that's going to layer services on top of your technology. Then, sure, you want to make sure that you have a vendor that helps you simplify and automate your financial flows. You want them to prove their ability to drive efficiencies. You're going to get this through those reference checks that you're going to ask the vendors for. They're going to provide you with a list of, of, of end users, and you're going to ask these end users, well, have you achieved your ROI? How easy was it to work with this vendor? How hard was the implementation process? How often do you get bug fixes and system upgrades? How is the vendor doing with keeping up with advanced technologies such as AI and business intelligence? These answers will give you clues into how the vendor is doing in helping its customers simplify and automate their processes. What's more, during those reference checks, you want to make sure you understand the ease of adoption and employee training with the solution. How easy is it for frontline staff to use this solution? This, again, is another reason why frontline staff should be involved in the evaluation of vendors. Do they believe that this system will be easy to use? It's hard enough to change our processes when we're automating. We don't want to have to deal with resistance because we chose a solution that was clunky, cumbersome, outdated. 
You also want to make sure you choose a reputable and established partner for P2P automation. There's a lot of money at stake in accounts payable at procure to pay. And that means that there's lots of vendors who've set their sights on this market. Folks, you have too much riding on your procure to pay life cycle to trust that some fly by night vendor who is selling pet food via an e-commerce site just a few years ago. You want to find a reputable, established partner who has a base of proven installations. And as I said, you want to make sure that that partner layers services on top of technology. Do they have solutions for strategic sourcing, for electronic payment processing? You know, the types of things that your CFO is really after? If not, you probably want to look in a different direction. Next year is going to be a critical year for P2P automation. Businesses understand that time is running out. They need to automate their P2P life cycle so they can compete in today's increasingly global and electronic trading commerce environment. You want to have the right approach for choosing the solution. And some of the recommendations we want to leave you with today is number one, lay the foundation for P2P to become invoice ready. Find a solution that not only provides a base for automation, but also has a roadmap for leveraging those advanced technologies. You also want to make sure you pursue a comprehensive P2P automation solution. You don't want another siloed solution in your department. You don't want a piecemeal. You don't want to settle for something. You want to make sure you work with a solution that can automate procure to pay from end to end from strategic sourcing all the way through payment settlement. What's more, you want to make sure you're working with a vendor that can integrate more progressive technological elements into your P2P solution. Do they have a plan for integrating robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, mobile technology? You want to understand where they are with those technologies, and you want to make sure they have the financial wherewithal to actually back up their plans. And finally, I want you to build a three-year roadmap of innovation for where you hope to be with your procured to pay department. Competing in today's global economy is very hard. You need to provide your business with the tools it needs to be able to stand apart from its competitors. And if you choose the right automation solution, you'll be able to do just that. That's all the time we have for this webinar. If you have more questions about buying a P2P solution, I encourage you to reach out to my friends at CoreCentric. Their contact information is now on the screen. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Mark Brousseau.